Well, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's a good day to come together, to worship God, to give him thanks and praise for the blessings that we enjoy. And I am glad that I can be with you for that. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. The scripture passages that I'm going to share with you today come to us from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. We're going to visit the first part of that chapter, the first 11 verses, and we're also going to visit the first 11 verses of the second chapter of John's Gospel. So I invite you to hear the word of our Lord from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. As the apostle, Speaking to the people of God writes, Brothers and sisters, I don't want you to be ignorant about spiritual gifts. You know that when you were Gentiles, you were often misled by false gods that can't even speak. So I want to make it clear to you that no one says Jesus is cursed when speaking by God's Spirit, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are different ministries, and the same Lord, and there are different activities, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. A word of wisdom is given by the Spirit to one person, and a word of knowledge to another according to the same Spirit, faith to still an still another by the same Spirit, gifts of healing to another in the one Spirit performance of miracles to another, prophecy to another, the ability to tell spirits apart to another, different kinds of tongues to another, and the interpretation of tongues to another. All these things are produced by the one and same Spirit who gives what he wants to each person. Now I invite you to hear the good news from the Gospel of John. Second chapter, beginning at the first verse. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the celebration. When the wine ran out, Jesus' mother said to him, They don't have any wine. And Jesus replied, Woman, what does that have to do with me? My time hasn't come yet. His mother told the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby were six stone water water jars used for the Jewish cleansing ritual, each able to hold about 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water, and they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some from them and take it to the head waiter. And they did. The head waiter tasted the water that had become wine. He didn't know where it came from, though the servants who drew the water knew. The head waiter called the groom and said, Everyone serves the good wine first. They bring out the second-rate wine only when the guests are drinking freely. You kept the good wine until now. This was the first miraculous sign that Jesus did in Cana of Galilee. He revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You know, we've, we've managed to get to the second Sunday after the Epiphany. Through all of the excitement, all of the stuff, the season of Advent with all of its expectation and preparations behind us, the excitement of Christmas Eve and Christmas Day have also come and gone for another year. We pause to remember the epiphany of the Lord and the baptism of the Lord. We've gone through all of that stuff. And now, now we're in the season after the epiphany in our church calendar. And it, this extends you know, from now 
until the start of Lent on Ash Wednesday. And we are in what is sometimes referred to in our church calendar as ordinary time. It's not a special season, it's just ordinary time. And the truth is that the majority of our church calendar, you know, from this period of time, from Epiphany until Lent, and then from Pentecost until Advent, is ordinary time. Ordinary. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today. Because ordinary time really extends beyond our church calendar. When you stop to think about it, we spend most of our lives in ordinary time. And I'm not just talking about the Sundays that are noted in our church calendar. Most of our lives are spent in the ordinary time of our regular regular routines with the only, only the occasional bit of excitement or terror tossed in here and there. You know, uh, there's bad vacations and graduations and engagements and weddings and births. And yes, illness and even the deaths of those whom we love. Most of our lives are spent in between those milestone events. Ordinary time. And most of us generally consider ourselves to be ordinary people, right? Although we might possibly be envious of those who've achieved a great deal of attention, you know, the famous actors or singers or authors or preachers and so on, we don't often see ourselves as really being anything special. And this mindset of considering ourselves to be ordinary can actually cause us to erroneously deem ourselves to be of little worth. We fall prey to society's long-held but mistaken notion that it's the most attention-getting attributes that have the real value, but that's, that's not the case. Our New Testament lesson today contains part of a letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to the people in the church in Corinth that he helped to get started. And they were having some issues, just like everybody does. Uh, but among their issues that they had, the Corinthians, apparently some of them at least, had fallen prey to this mistaken notion that, well, speaking in tongues, and that simply means um, that people were able to speak in some sort of different language that nobody had heard of that had been given to them by the Holy Spirit. And generally, other people didn't know what they were saying, so they need somebody to interpret that. But they saw this for some reason, as being the very most important of all gifts. Unless you could speak in tongues, well, then you weren't really anything of note. And those who could and did speak in tongues were apparently denigrating those who couldn't or, or didn't speak in tongues. Because they didn't have that most valuable of all gifts. Therefore, their gifts were of no use or utility. Well, Paul informs the Corinthians and he informs us today, you and I, almost 2,000 years later, that there are different spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are different ministries, and the same Lord, and there are different activities, but the same God who produces all of them and everyone. A demonstration of the Spirit is given to each person for the common good. Did you happen to catch to whom this, these gifts were given? Because Paul reminds us that each person is given gifts by God. Each person. Nobody is left out. That means all of us have received gifts from God. As ordinary as we might happen to be. A definition of ordinary is you know, what is commonplace or standard? If each person, meaning every person, has been given gifts, well, then the possession of those gifts is just about as ordinary as you can get. See, there's nothing wrong with ordinary. All human gifts are given to us as ordinary as we are by God. They're given as God chooses. And all of these gifts God gives us are intended to serve the common good, as Paul reminds us. 
over and over and over again, God repeatedly shows his preference to use ordinary people for the work of the kingdom. Noah and Abram, Jacob and Joseph, Moses and David, all of these people were called out of the ordinary routines of their ordinary lives, and God was able to do extraordinary things with them. You see, the power is not so much in the ordinary people as it was and as it is in our God who chooses to call these ordinary people to do his purposes on this earth. God uses the ordinary and with it makes the extraordinary. In our gospel lesson today, we, we, we visit that very familiar story of what happened when Jesus attended that wedding in Cana. Remember that? Remember what happens? When the wine runs out, Jesus' mother comes to him for help. And even though Jesus told his mother that his time hadn't come yet, he nonetheless did what she asked. And Jesus turned to the most ordinary of ordinary, plain old water. You can't get much more ordinary than water. And transformed that ordinary water into extraordinary wine. As it was with that most ordinary plain old water, as it was with all of those people in the past that we now see as heroes in our Bible, so also can it be with you. The power, the glorious transformative power comes from God who brings extraordinary things out of the ordinary. So then, since God has given gifts to all people, and that means that the ordinary condition of all of humankind is that every single one of us possesses gifts that with the unfailing assistance of our almighty God can be used for the good of the kingdom. We all have gifts that can be used. So the question for us to consider today then, for each of us, all of us to consider then, are what are the gifts that God has given me? Think about that. It's a good question. What are the gifts that God has given to you? What are those things that you do well? What are those things that you enjoy doing? You see, those are among the gifts that God has given to you. So the next question is, after we recognize that yes, we do have gifts, the next question is, well, how am I using those gifts that God has given to me? What are the ways that you can use doing what you're good at doing or what you enjoy doing for the good of the kingdom, for the benefit of your neighbors and society? How do or how can your gifts address needs in your neighborhood, in your community, in the world around you? My brothers and sisters, given the reality that we all have been given gifts and the reality that there are needs around us that our gifts can be used to meet, well, then the next question is, if I'm not using the gifts that God has given to me, why? Why am I not using those gifts? If you're not using the gifts that God has given to you, what is holding you back? What's holding you back? Is it fear? Lack of self-esteem? Selfishness? Why are you not using the gifts that God gave you? And remember, you don't have to use them all by your lonesome. God is with you. And, yes, your gifts do have value. They can do things. They can accomplish things. So are you still telling yourself, this lie, and that's what it is, this lie that your gifts don't have value because you don't think they're as attention-grabbing or as popular as you'd like for them to be? Can it be that Satan is appealing to your ego or your selfishness to keep you from employing your gifts if you don't think you're going to get the attention that your self-centered heart desires? In our refusal 
to use the gifts that God has given us for the common good of God's kingdom, we are in essence turning away from God, which is sin. And so that sin is coming between us and that right relationship with God. It's detrimental to our quality of life on this earth. Brothers and sisters, as ordinary as we all are, we have all been given gifts, you and I, by God that can and should be employed for the good of God's kingdom on this earth, right smack in the middle of our ordinary, everyday, humdrum routine. We've all been given gifts. However, the gifts cannot do what God intends for them to do for the common good unless we, you and I, make the conscious choice to use those gifts because God will not force you to employ the gifts that God has graciously given to you. The choice to use those gifts is always yours. So pray about that. Talk to God. Ask for guidance, inspiration. Ask for courage and strength to make good use of the gifts that have already been given to you. And know this, that God will be with you. And as God has brought marvelous things out of the ordinary and out of the ordinary lives of ordinary people in the past, so also will God do with you when you use the gifts that God has given you. Praise be to God for joining with us in the ordinariness of our lives so that he may do great things with us. Amen. Will you pray with me? Glorious God, we come to you on this January day confessing that, well, we don't always do all that we can do for the good of your kingdom, for our neighbors, even for ourselves. We allow our fears and, sadly, our own selfish inclinations to keep us from sharing the gifts and the love that you have so generously lavished upon us. We need your help, O oh God. Speak to our timid and wayward hearts on this day, remind us of who and whose we are. Open our minds to the gifts that you have given us and open our hearts to the ways in which we can put these gifts to good use right in the middle of our ordinary everyday lives. Help us to pay more heed to the urgings of your Holy Spirit and guide us along those paths that you would have us to take for our good and for the good of our neighbors, because we pray today not just for ourselves, but we pray for our neighbors. And when we pray for our neighbors, we pray for all of them, every single one of them. The ones who are like us, the ones who are not, the ones that we agree with, and the ones that we don't agree with. We pray for all of them. We pray for healing, strength, comfort, and hope to come to all who are suffering today, whether that would be from illness or injury, and we acknowledge how difficult life can be on this earth, and we earnestly pray for assistance to come to all who are struggling with those, those storms of life, those things that are, can either be of natural occurrence or the result of human errors or sinfulness that bring so much heartache to so many. We pray for you to help them through these difficult times, the struggles that they face. Give them strength and courage. Bring the assistance to them that they need and show us how we can be of assistance as we are able, using the gifts you've given us. And all of this we bring to you in the name of our risen and living Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord, the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, 
my brothers and sisters, as we prepare to, to end this virtual time of worship together so that we may, may go forth into the world to make good use of the gifts that God has given us, let's pray about that in the prayer for going forth that we use to bring every worship service to a close. Creator, Redeemer God, be with me as I go out into the world. Open my eyes and my heart to the opportunities that you provide for me to serve you and to love my neighbors. Daily give me the wisdom and courage that I need to be an effective servant. In Jesus' name. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord raise up his countenance upon you and give you peace.